Many of us must have heard about the story of five blind men. For those of us who haven't heard of it, the story goes like this. So there were five blind men who wanted to know how would an elephant look like. So they went to an elephant exhibition and they touched an elephant to know how it feels like. Each one of them touched different parts of the elephant and therefore they all had different understanding. So somebody who touched the tusk thought the elephant feels like a spear. The one who touched the tail thought the elephant is like a rope. So each one that was a different interpretation of elephant and when they came back they all got into a quarrel trying to figure out who was right and who was wrong. I also come across these five blind men in the case of financial modeling. So when I ask a practitioner to explain what a financial model is all about, so some people tell me that financial modeling is all about preparing a forward-looking financial statements. For them, the best financial model is one where the balance sheet assets and liabilities tally without having to make any compromises. For the second category, financial modeling is all about spreadsheets, programming, automations and data visualization. For them, a great model is the one that is heavily automated. There is one more category who believe that financial modeling is some kind of a crystal ball that should tell what would happen in future. For them, the best model is the one which gives a forecast that is very close to the real world outcome. If you speak to a more seasoned professional in consulting or corporate finance, they may tell you that financial modeling is all about business storytelling through numbers. This is a very good definition, but I would say it's still not very comprehensive. The fifth category in the list is about those who believe that financial modeling is all about mathematical equations and quantitative techniques. Just like the proverbial five blind men, these practitioners are not wrong. But the definition is too narrow and that is because it's significantly limited by their own limited personal experience. In fact, if you ask me, I would say except for the fifth element, which is about mathematical equation, the rest four are not even constants in a financial model. For example, if I were to build a model to price an exotic derivative, I'm not going to be including any financial statement or I'm not going to be talking about any business. Similarly, when a bank does a stress testing, it's not like banks are forecasting a liquidity squeeze or an interest rate shock. But what they are trying to find out is what could happen to the bank in case if such eventualities do occur. You must be thinking, well spreadsheets must be a constant though, right? If not spreadsheet, at least some other software, an R or a SAS. Uh, if you think that pace, let me just take you back to your books. Assuming you are a finance student, have you heard of capital as a pricing model or the Black Scholes Merton model, Gordon Growth model or the Altman Zisco model? If you have heard of all of them, we call them as models. But where did you learn them? In textbooks or in spreadsheets? So if all these five are not proper definition of financial models, then what is? If I were to give you a concise and comprehensive definition, I would say a financial model is a mathematical representation of a financial phenomenon such as a business or a financial contract that are represented as an equation or a set of equations which are derived either through theoretical relationship between variables or through observation of the empirical behavior of the variables. These are often, but not necessarily, built using a decision support or analytics software. I now know what you are thinking. You are thinking that this guy made us watch through such a long video and all that the person is giving us is a three line definition. How is this three line of any practical use? Right? I know. Well, at this juncture, let me just assure you that proper understanding of these three lines and what modeling means is a critical difference between a financial model that is a great decision support tool and a financial model that is at best used to fulfill a formality. In the next episode, I should take you through how practitioners sometimes end up making a mess of financial modeling because of their failure to understand these three lines. I will be sharing my own experiences as well as some of the experiences of others that I have seen. 
Until then, see you and take care.